Good morning. I have found maybe the craziest spot that I could find for our chair yoga flow today. Um, as you see, this is a huge tree that got knocked over in a storm and left this big hole, uh, which is now a puddle. And all of this are the exposed tree roots. So for our chair yoga today, we're talking about roots. And we're not only talking about being rooted and being grounded, but also what happens when God or life uproots you like this tree. So find a chair, find a stable, solid chair that you can sit on and then find the ground with your feet. You're going to need your chair and you're going to need one prop today. And for my prop, um, I grabbed a book. So you notice this book is probably about 11 and a half to 12 inches. And you can use a book or you can use a block. In yoga, we would use a yoga block for this. So if you have a book or some type of block, something that you can hold. So I'm gonna hold it like I've just got a manicure and I'm gonna hold it with my hands um, at the different edges and I'm going to be able to push in slightly just to keep the book with, between my two palms. Now this book is Grant's book. Dr. Scarborough wrote a book. You may not know that. It's called Awake My Soul. So if you want a copy of Dr. Scarborough's book, uh, you can get one of those either at Mercy Med or on the Mercy Med website and it's $15 for the hardback, or you can get $10 for the digital version. So this is gonna be my prop today. You can choose any book or anything that would fit, maybe even a small cutting board that you can hold between your palms, and that's gonna be the prop you're gonna need a little bit later. So to start with, let's start by finding our breath. Take your hands, find a part of your rib cage, or if you prefer, part of your belly where you can feel the bottom of your ribs. Inhale, breath. Fill up your lungs slow. Inhale. Exhale. Breath slow. Notice your ribs come closer together. Again, slow, deep inhale. Welcome. Good morning, Monday morning. And exhale breath. We think of that as our 360 degree breath. Root your feet down, squish your toes into your carpet, or if you have a hard floor, find your heel pushing down and find the two corners of the ball of your foot pushing down. You notice as you push yourself down, it almost lifts you slightly up out of your chair. From there, squeeze your knees together, though you're not going to bring them together, and then feel how centered you can be. This is our mountain pose, Tadasana. Shoulders are nice and down away from your ears. Collarbone is broad. Take a few deep breaths here in Tadasana, mountain pose. Notice as you squeeze your knees slightly together, push your feet, pushing your roots down into the ground. Couple breaths here. It's amazing how there's a time for everything it says in Ecclesiastes, a time to be rooted, a time to be planted, and then a time to be uprooted. Let go of your mountain pose. We'll find that again later. Start with shoulder rolls. When we think about getting rooted, of course we can think about our feet, but we can also think about the center of our body. And if you think about your body as this being the center part, there's really not a lot you can do with it without either your shoulders or your hips. So we'll work through our shoulders and hips a few different ways. First, with these shoulder rolls, you can make them bigger. They can become arm circles. Again, good morning, Monday. <laughs> uh, it's a great time to set your focus for the week. Oh my goodness. What kind of week do you wanna have? Well, you can choose on Monday. Reverse the circles big arm circles. I like to do them slow because I really want you to get the rust off your joints. 
movement with resistance. It's kind of like WD-40 or like a motor oil for your joints. So really squeeze your shoulder blades together and then shoulders come all the way up towards your ears and then all the way back down. Oh, great. Let's get a side bend. Again, root your feet, feel your heels push down. Feel ball of your foot together, knees come together, hand on the chair, inhale, breath go tall, exhale, side bend, exhale again to go deeper. Back through the center, reset your feet, feel some strength, inhale, breath grow tall, exhale, over to the side, and then exhale again, go a bit deeper. Inhale through the center side, this time looking over your back shoulder. So I'm looking at these roots. And you know, it's funny because roots, they look a lot like the nerves in our bodies. Come back around the center. It's amazing how when God uproots us in some way, we kind of feel like we have exposed nerves. Oh, and back through the center. Now forward fold, walk your feet out. You want your feet to be out in front of your knees, hips still on the chair, inhale breath, exhale, fold forward. Your elbows can be on your knees or if you want hands towards your feet. Again, if we had a stack of blocks or books, this could be where you would put your hands on blocks or books. Inhale, long through your spine, exhale, let your spine round. Let it relax. Breathe here. Walk your hands back up your body, back up to the center. And now we're going to take our book. So this is where you needed your book. And what we're going to do with this, I'll show you a side view. For, so for a side view. I've got it sandwiched between my palms. I've got my fingers out as if I just had a manicure and I push it forward. So just my shoulders go forward and then I pull it back. Just my shoulders go back. Do you see how that works? Push it forward, pull it back. We're going to do this several times and you might get a little burny, trembly, tingly. Uh, it's work friends. It's work. So push it forward. Pull it back. We'll do that three more times. Forward. Oh, really pull shoulder blades together when you come back. Shoulder blades separate. It's kind of like opening the elevator doors, closing elevator doors. Open up the elevator doors on your back and then close them tight together. We think of that shoulder movement that we are going to need that a little bit later. Um, put your book to the side for a moment. One arm up. Give yourself a pat on the back for how good you did. Your hand may not go that far. That's okay. Grab the other and give it a slight pull. Big breath. Shoulder stretch. Yes. Okay. Other hand as if you're going to give yourself a pat on the back. Again, it may not stretch that far. That's okay. Use the other hand, gentle through the elbow, give it a pull. And if yours looks more like this with your hand in front, go with it. You do you. Work with what you've got today. And release. So a little bit of our, our shoulder mobility going there. This time we're going to take the book and we're going to try the similar, but instead of right out in front of us, I'm going to try it up at an angle. So right in a minute ago, we found that movement here and here. Now let's try taking it up and see if you can find it. So this time, shoulders go forward, open elevator doors, shoulders back. We'll do this three times. So three and back, two and back, one and back. What do you think? Was that a little easier or a little harder? Okay, we're going to try it overhead. Now, for overhead, your overhead may not be all the way up, but you may still be at an angle, and if you need to go back to forward, 
that is perfectly fine. But really keep your palms together. I don't want to drop Dr. Scarborough's book in the mud, especially since it's a brand new copy. Uh, and he will sign these for you as well if you want to buy one at Mercy Med. Okay, here we go. Overhead. So if your overhead is still out in front, no big deal. But overhead, so push up, pull it down. Oh, this changes the movement so much. Push up. And we're going to go sets three. Go two. And then go one, back down. Now, what did you notice? See, that was using totally different section because our shoulders can move in so many amazing ways. Okay, now we've got one that's a little bit more of a challenge and I really hope I don't drop this book. So if I had a block, you would put the block behind you or you put your book. Okay, hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna turn at an angle so hopefully you can see it. We're gonna go up and down. And you're up and down. If you can't do that with a book, this is where you can use a scarf. This is where you could use a belt and you could hold it behind you like this. And we're gonna go up and down with it. That's where we're headed. So I'm gonna try it with a book. You'll probably will need to sit to the side of your chair here to make this happen. Because if you have a chair back, you're not gonna be able to put your hands there. All right, so we're gonna take our book, put it behind us, or this could be a strap, this could be a scarf. And if just getting yourself there is really, really tough, then just pretend and take a pretend book or scarf behind you. All right, root your feet down through the heels, down through the ball of the foot, strength through your legs, hands behind, or just to the sides as far as you can. Up we go. We're gonna do five of these and back down. Let's do five. Uh, we're counting down. This is four. Back down. Let's do three. Push hard into it. And we're going to do two. Oh, this is a lot of work. And then this is number one. Back down. Oh, I hope you didn't drop your book. Um, take your shoulders in a big roll. Now, notice if I had you in person in class, which hopefully we will soon, what I would be looking for is when you do this, we don't really want you to be super far forward and we don't really want you to like crazy push out your chest. We'd want to try to have you just about in the middle, uh, but that takes a lot of work. All right, so that was a lot of fun. Now, put your hands on your book and get your fingers apart as if you just had your manicure. This time we're going to take it up and around in a circle and bring it in, elbows bend. Up and around in a circle and back. So notice that the front of the book is facing forward the whole time. Great. And now just go the other direction. So you're pushing your palms into it to keep it from falling, which in my case it would fall into the mud. That would be unfortunate. Up and over and release. Oh, I know your shoulders are feeling warmer now. So shoulder rolls, shake it, shake it out. And the other thing that our shoulders do is, um, so as we're doing this for our shoulders, if you're noticing a lot of tension in your neck, number one, you're normal, that happens. But number two, let's give a stretch there. So I want you to take your chin, tuck it back, kind of like you're giving yourself a triple chin. So like you really want to give yourself a double chin. And then push a little bit back against your head to your hand. I'm not pushing head to hand on my head, pushing my head to my hand. Notice how that lengthens the back of your neck. Now with that nice long neck, think of your neck growing up tall. Inhale breath and then tip it to the side. That's beautiful. Through the center, inhale breath. Exhale, ear to the side. Let's do that several times. So we still keep the back of our neck nice and long. See, if I, if I, if I just kind of roll it around, I might be able to do more movement, but I'm really going long to the back of my neck so that as I tip, I'm getting a little bit more length in that stretch. It's a little bit of work for those neck muscles as well. Beautiful. And now we're gonna let our hand help us. So start by a few shaking your head, no. 
chin goes over your shoulder. You're not cranking it with all of your might, but you're taking it to its range of motion. And then just seeing, ah, that'll give just a little bit more. Beautiful. Now some gentle circles around. My nose becomes the Sharpie. Draw some circles. Draw some circles the other way. There we go. Now the hand can help us. So arms out. Leave this arm out. Take your head. Get long. Push your head into your hand. Feel really long through the back of your neck. Now your head tips to the side. My hand just rests. It's not pulling. It's resting. And arm drops down. Shoulder comes down. There's a whole lot of burn there. Big stretch sensation. Hand down. Release to the center. Roll the shoulders. Arms out. Get long. Push your head back into the back of your hand, lengthening the back of your neck. And now head over to the side. Gentle rest. My fingers are just gently resting, not pulling. Hand goes down. Shoulder down. All the way down to the ground. Ah. Take your hands, find the meaty part of your shoulders right behind your neck, whatever you can reach and grab. Give yourself a neck massage there. So put pressure, give love to the muscles. <laughs> yeah, they might have been complaining a little bit, that's okay. If you're the person who is constantly typing and texting, you know, notice that all of us as humans, our now go-to posture is this, right? This is like all we do all day is like this, either reading our books, reading our Kindles, on our phones, on our tablets. This is like us. So just lengthening it up, lengthening that back. Oh, that can feel like a lot of work. Just changing that position. Okay, so we've worked through the top. We've worked through our shoulders. We're going to work through our pelvis. Feet press. Push your heels down. Push the ball of the foot down. And find your cat and cow. Now with you, you don't need to shift to the side. I'm just giving you a side view. So pretend like the back of my chair is here. And I push my back back into the back of the chair. And then I come forward away from the chair. Inhale, breath here. Exhale. <sighs> Belly button back kind of towards your spine here. Inhale, breath forward. Yep. And then back to your cat shape. <sighs> Wonderful. Now let's see if you can just do the bottom half. Okay, this is a challenge. This is a brain challenge. Leave your shoulders where they are and let's see if you can just push your hips back and then gently tuck them under. Oh my goodness, it's so much. Push your hips back and gently tuck them under. Yeah, that's difficult, but let's try just the top part. So leave your hips where they are. All right, just lift your sternum and then push just the sternum back, chin to chest. So lift the sternum here and then chin to chest, sternum. Oh yes. So we work through the center of our bodies. Now let's think about our legs. Some interior and exterior muscles there we want to work. If you have your, if you're using a block, we could even use the block to push the knees into. But I'm going to use my hands. So I've got my hands to the sides. Inhale breath. On your exhale, you're going to squeeze the knees together, but your arms are going to resist. Good thing we warmed up our shoulders first. Inhale breath. Exhale. Squeeze. Knees together. Squeeze for five, four, three, two, one. We'll do it again. Push heels down. Push through the ball of your foot. Squeeze knees together. Five, four, three, two, one. One, we'll do it two more times. Inhale, breath, squeeze it all together. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's go again. Squeeze those knees. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Beautiful. Now the outside. So we're going to push the knees out, but hold them in with our arms. Your arms ready for this? Yes? your arm workout as well. Heels drive down through your foot. Ball of your foot drives down. Push your knees open. Resist with your hands. 
five, four, three, two, one. Breath in. Give it a lot of resistance. Give it everything you've got. Five, four, three, two, one. We're doing it two more times. Ah, inhale. And let's exhale into it. Exhale. Five, four, three, two, one. Last time, a little tremble in your muscles is a good thing. And five, four, three, two, one. Good. Now let's take our hips in a circle. So my knee is drawing this Sharpie circle in front of me. Yeah, I just think about like Farmer Keith right now. He's working on the farm expansion and it's like fall farming time. I don't know if you saw his Facebook live, but when Farmer Keith is working on the fall, he has to pull out of the ground all of these plants that he worked so hard to plant. He's literally uprooting the whole garden. Take the other knee in circles around. And we think about that, we never really enjoy that feeling of God uprooting us. And yet God says that's the only way that we can be planted deeper into his grace. So like, think about this tree. So this tree, I'll show you a view of it once we end. But this is a ginormous, it's actually a mass of a couple trees together. And the reason why it went toppled over is because the roots couldn't go any deeper because this big river stone underneath it, it it couldn't get deeper into the ground and just think if when this tree was a littler tree a shorter tree if someone had dug it up and uprooted it and transplanted it into deeper soil it would still be standing today so we hate it for god to uproot us but yet we all want our roots to go deeper. Maybe sometimes he's uprooting us to plant us where we can go deeper. Set your hips down in your seat. Find your sitting bones. Push your heels down and push down through the ball of the foot. Bring the knees together, although you won't let them come together. Have that feeling of bringing them together. Now do it with just one foot. So maybe you have to hold underneath this leg, that would be fine. But notice how the, the force from this foot puts strength into here to hold this. Oh yes, and the bottom of my foot is super muddy, but I'm still gonna get some ankle rolls here. So root that foot down, feel the force come through the center, hold this for five, four, three, two, one, set it down, we're gonna try the other side. You'll get to see the other muddy shoe now. Push the heel down, drive the ball of the foot down. Bring the knees as if you were bringing them together, strong in the leg. Inhale breath, you're gonna bring up the, lead, the leg. Maybe you have to hold underneath it, that is fine, but feel how this strength becomes this strength. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one, set it down. What did you notice? Notice how we uprooted one leg because the other leg was nice and rooted. It stayed put. We're gonna of course do that more because that's good work. But before we do that, let's take some simple leg lifts. So see if you can find that same rooted feeling. If you had carpet and bare feet, you could squish your toes into it, really drive your heel down. And notice how that gets you a little bit more buoyant and bouncy in your chair. Then we'll take one leg up, set it down. Other leg up, set it down. So we're gonna continue this, this little march. And we're gonna do this 10. So 10, nine, eight, hold it, seven. Really push it down, five, four, three, two, and one, set it down. It's literally the force coming up from the ground that gives you the strength to be more buoyant and for that strength to translate to the legs. 
pretty cool. Let's try it again, except this time you can try it with the long leg if you want to. So maybe it looks like a knee coming up, or maybe it looks like a, a leg coming up. It may not come up much. It may be a straight leg down at an angle. What I want you to feel is how the strength coming up from the ground becomes the strength in your hips and in your center and how that moves your legs. So let's go for it. Here's one, two, three, four, we're going to 10, five, six, seven, yes, eight, get it, nine, and 10. Ah, set it down. <laughs> set it down. Roll your hips around in a circle on your chair. Ah. After this, I would love to hear about any ways that God is rooting or unrooting you in life. You can always message. I'm, I'm using the PT Mercy Med account here. So you can message to that account. Roll your hips around in a circle. All right, and now let's get some hip flexor stretch. So we're going to windshield wiper out and one in, kind of like 90-90, and windshield wiper out and one in. Let's do that several times. Windshield wiper to the side, and again. You can separate your feet more if you want to. If I do that, I'm going to be in puddles. <laughs> windshield wiper to the side and to the other side wonderful all right so sometimes God digs this up completely and I'm going to find a way to show you what we're going to do with this so we work with our shoulders a lot if you remember that now we've been working on transferring strength transferring force from the ground up to our hips and this is our final Spot that we're headed. So I'm going to take my chair and put it here. So it's going to be out in front of me. Hopefully you can see it pretty well without me putting it actually in a puddle. All right, and then I'm going to walk my feet back. All right, as I walk my feet back, I want you to find a place where you can really put the feet down firmly. So again, squish your toes down into the carpet, pull your legs together as if you were bringing your knees together, though you're not going to. From standing, find a strong standing pose and now with my chair just a little bit in front of me I'm going to fold forward still feeling strength here and hands overhead and this becomes my downward facing dog so my shoulders have to give a little bit if you find that hold it there for a moment it's okay if you have your knees bent just try to find strength from the legs that becomes openness in the shoulders Wonderful, okay? Now I'm gonna take a little step back. You may wanna stay closer to your chair, but I'm gonna take a little step back because I feel pretty balanced. If you don't feel balanced, then stay closer to your chair, okay? There we go, stay safe, people. All right, so we're gonna take our hands here. Find my feet really pushing down. Heels are driving down. And now I'm gonna find that my shoulders are gonna give a little bit here. And I'm gonna keep my back as long and straight as I can. This is my chair version of my downward facing dog. Hold there for a moment. Feel strong shooting out from the legs up through the center of your body, really, really tight, and then out through the shoulders. All right, gently come in, walk up towards your chair to come out of it. How are we doing? All right, hopefully you're doing okay. You can take your hips to the side, you can take a side stretch. We're gonna try that again, but this time we're gonna, we're gonna do funny things with your feet. All right, we're gonna change the feet a little bit. Um, if I could be a little bit further away and not in a puddle, then I would show this to you. So what you wanna do is I want you to bring your feet, so like these are your feet, bring your toes together and your heels out. So you're gonna be slightly pigeon-toed. I know they tell us never to walk like this, but this time we're going to. So you got your toes in. You got your heels out. Now, see if you can still drive your heels down and drive the balls of your feet down. Take your hands out in front of you. Gentle knee, bend in your knees is fine. And then see, maybe it's elbows on your chair. 
see if you feel different through the center of your back. I know I do. That for me really spreads out my lower back. It gives me a lot more space there. So I'm going to walk my feet back because I'm feeling balanced. If you're not feeling balanced, you got to be closer to your chair or table, whatever you're using. All right, now I'm going to spread that part of my back out. So I'm driving my heels, driving my toes. All that strength is coming up through the back of my legs. Now I'm going to go long through the center of my body, really, really long and into my shoulders. So my shoulders have a little bit of give and extension. That's our downward facing dog in a pigeon toed uh, type foot stance. Oh. And then walk it back in gently towards your chair. So notice that we have to feel rooted and then get uprooted in order to get taller and longer. So whatever transitions you might have in life, maybe God is preventing this from happening to you. Maybe he's uprooting you and transplanting you to plant you deeper so that your roots can equal growing taller and higher. All right, last one. Because we did the pigeon toed with toes together, we can also try it with toes out. Now, I really like the toes together. So if you liked it and it felt good, just do that again. But if you want to try it differently, then you can have your heels together and your toes out. And from here, this may be really different feeling. So again, root the feet down, root the heels down. Find all that strength coming up your legs, then into your tummy. Notice how this is kind of like our cat pose here. We're taking the belly button and we're taking our spine long. Now, hands over head or even elbows on chair. Feel what it feels like. Get long. And this is our downward facing dog. Kind of like our forward folding position from our chair. Beautiful. And then walk it back in. <laughs> well, good work today. When we're totally finished, I will show you what this crazy tree looks like behind me. But for now, find the most relaxing position you can find. So relaxing for you might be feeling centered and stable on your chair. Relaxing for you might mean laying down. You can lay down on your carpet. If you had a yoga mat, you could lay on the yoga mat, put your heels up in your chair or even heels up in your couch, whatever is available for you. You know, if we learn how to trust God's will, how to trust his grace in transitions and in being uprooted, then our roots will just go a lot deeper into his grace. I'll read a few scriptures. So as you find the most relaxing position you can, you can take hands back to your ribs. Inhale, feel your breath expand out to the sides. Exhale, feel the ribs draw together. Allow God to soothe any exposed nerves, if you will. Whether those feel like sensitive nerves emotionally, spiritually, or there's just physical parts of your body that you want to give over to God right now. Send breath. Imagine that your breath can go to those places and that you're surrendering that part of you to Father God who created you. If we trusted God in transitions and uprooting, we would be deeper rooted in grace. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 2. There is a time for everything. A season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. Being uprooted by grace is a transition. Breathe in. Notice 
Any parts of you that seem to resist transition? Let those parts of you gently relax into the floor, into the chair. This is a quote by Pastor Stephen Furtick. It shouldn't freak you out to realize that God's eyes are on you. Because he doesn't see you through the eyes of disapproval or disappointment. His presence is not a sign of condemnation. It's actually an invitation. God is present with you through his Holy Spirit because he intends to uproot you from the tyranny of the familiar, shatter the monotonous life you've had, and take you on an adventure. I'll read that part again. God intends to uproot you from the tyranny of the familiar and shatter the monotonous life you've had and take you on an adventure. I'll pray to close our time today. Dear Father God, thank you that you uproot us only to plant us deeper. God, you are so compassionate when we feel like our roots are being exposed. And God, you do that at the perfect time. Father God, I pray that when we are being uprooted from the tyranny of the familiar, that we will recognize that monotonous life is not what you have for us. God, you have a great adventure for us to go on with you. So I pray that you will help us not to continue unfruitful habits and patterns and instead be transformed and deeper rooted in your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. In just a moment, I'll grab the camera and show you just how crazy this um, tree is behind me. But again, if you want a prop, a great yoga prop, like my yoga prop today, this is the Wake Your Soul, written by Dr. Scarborough. He has got a great sense of humor, and that really comes through in his writing. It's a lot of fun to read, and we have these at Mercy Med. You can get it uh, signed by him. They're $15 for the hard copies, which are the paperbacks. Or if you just want a digital version, you can get that on our website for $10. Okay, let me show you just how crazy this thing is and why I was kind of inspired. So here we go. I'm going to gently lift this out. So this tree, look at this. Isn't that nuts? It's actually like three trees. In fact, I'll walk a little bit further away so you can see. Look at that. That's all of that that was uprooted. And those are all the roots. You know, I'd really rather for God go ahead <laughs> and uproot and transition me before something like that happens. Isn't he wise and isn't he faithful? All right, well, we love you guys and you have a wonderful rest of your day. Uh, next Monday I won't be here because we're doing something special for the clinic. We are going to have a special day of just catering to restaurant workers. Uh, it's called Pop-Up Doc. So you have a wonderful rest of your Monday and God bless you.